My name is John. I'm Kayla. And this is five tips for traveling cross country or on a road trip. So tip number one is to service your vehicle to ensure its reliability and I cannot stress how important this tip is. So this will include an oil change and depending on your vehicle you might need another one while you're on the road. Like my Jeep is good for like 8,000 miles so our cross country trip that was like 8,200 miles was like right on time to change the oil again. But also check your other fluids like engine coolant washer fluid, and make sure you have good wipers, brake fluid, power steering fluid, transmission fluid, all the fluids, and make sure your tires have a good amount of life left on them. If you've got AAA, make sure it's in effect, as well as your insurance and registration, and it wouldn't hurt to have a mechanic look over your car, especially your brakes, and make sure you have a spare tire, and if not, to at least have fix a flat. All right, so tip number two is pack to prepare, because emergencies happen and accidents happen, and you should be prepared for them. You never know what might happen, so good thing to have is first aid kit, with some bug wipes, fire ants, you never know where those buggers might come from, and if you're like me, make sure you have plenty of Dramamine on hand, you never know. Dramamine is? Motion sickness medicine. Another good thing to have is like a mini tool kit or a vehicle repair kit. We made our own and we had screwdrivers, pliers, some electrical and duct tape, wire ties, bungee cords, and a pocket knife. Just any little random things that could help for anything that might go wrong. One thing that came in very handy that we used all the time was a flashlight, so make sure you have one of them. Wouldn't hurt to have an umbrella or raincoats. Our Jeeps come equipped with GPS navigation already in the car, however, you never know there's certain attractions that it doesn't have or places that you might want to go, so having your phone doesn't always work. So you could bring an atlas or just physical maps to have with you just in case. Another good thing we bought is this portable little jump pack in case the car dies. We also had a set of jumper cables just in case. And since you're going to be driving a lot of miles, it wouldn't hurt to have a windshield repair kit just in case someone kicks up a rock at your windshield. Or back into the insurance part, double check your policy, see if you have glass coverage if needed. Okay, tip number three, items to pack make a list first things first obviously remember your chargers whether you have a plug in your vehicle that is like a wall outlet or your 12 volt chargers for the cigarette lighter as well as any mounts you might need for the windshield or your dash to hold your phone for like if you don't have a gps one of the key things for us was we had a brought a five gallon jug of water with a hand pump as well as our own personal water bottles so we could fill them up along the way saved a ton of money, a ton of time just having it with us and being able to fill it at any time. And for anybody that ever plans to go to the Grand Canyon, if you go to one of the campgrounds, you can refill your five gallon jug with fresh spring water from the canyon. We also had a bunch of snacks that we probably only ate like 10% <laughs> of, but Brought way too many. <laughs> but we had enough nourishment so we didn't have to eat out every single meal. We brought like Lunchables for John. I had little like protein packs. We brought Goober, peanut butter and jelly with some bread. Just anything that was easy to have on the go. We also had a plug-in cooler that plugged in in the back seat of the Jeep. So it kept our Starbucks coffees, the Lunchables, any perishables that you want to bring with you keeps it cold. Easier than having to refill ice all the time. And drain it. Yeah. You can either have it in a cigarette lighter or uh, actual outlet and as long as you don't open it you can just leave it. it stays cold all night another important thing to pack is comfortable shoes and clothes and if you plan on leaving your vehicle at any time whether it be on a walk or a hike to pack appropriately for the season and climate so check the weather where you're going where you're gonna be because you don't want to be wearing shorts in the Rocky Mountains and it wouldn't hurt just in case to carry a snow brush. For us, we had obviously our comfy shoes, whether it be slides or Crocs, but then we had to make sure we had good shoes for hiking around the Grand Canyon, other places like that, but comfortable clothes 
things you're not going to mind being in in the car. So whether it be like gym shorts or leggings for girls, hoodies, or guys. just comfortable clothes that are good for long drives. And on the subject of hiking and walking, it wouldn't hurt to have a drawstring backpack. Throw your water bottle in there, any of your cameras. Along the lines of eating and snacking, it's best and helpful to bring paper products, paper plates, some paper towels, silverware if you need it, and also some garbage bags. Don't be a litter bug! <laughs> I also added a notebook and a pen. I wrote down certain things we might want to see or remember. I also wrote down like gas stuff, so what we accumulated along the way. Also helped keep all the receipts straight so we could tally everything up once we got home. We also brought a window shade, which we used on the windshield to keep light and heat out for when we slept in the Jeep. Also, we used it out west when it was super hot at the Grand Canyon. We were able to put the heat side out, keep the Jeep nice and cool while we were out exploring. Something that came in real handy that we got is fans for when we slept at night. We got ones that took D batteries, which I would strongly recommend against and get rechargeable batteries because the D batteries, first of all, didn't last through the night and we kept on having to buy D batteries at random stores. Hand sanitizer and wipes, always a good idea. Sunscreen. We also brought along a bunch of quarters. We didn't know if we needed them for showers at any truck stops, any of those viewfinders you might see when you're out exploring. Laundry. And always have cash on hand for places that don't accept credit cards. Another good idea, stamps. I know our parents liked the idea of us sending them a postcard while we were out anywhere cool. So just have them just in case, you never know. This one can't leave the house <laughs> without a uh, face mask to, or a sleep mask. Sleep mask. It's a weighted one too. Don't forget to bring your cameras because you're going to be seeing so many awesome things. So this could be your DSLR cameras, your GoPros, your 360 cameras, whatever the case may be, bring your cameras along everywhere. On that topic, memory cards, batteries, chargers. So this one's a little funny for you ladies. It's not so easy to go to the bathroom on the road or always find a truck stop, so my mother-in-law bought me a Shiwi, so you just pull over and go to the bathroom. Have some wipes, none of your other toiletries, so your shampoos, your conditioners, dry shampoo was key for me, deodorants, toothbrush, toothpaste, any of your home toiletries, don't forget. And don't forget your medications and prescriptions. Vitamins. And the last thing in this topic that I would recommend is to download the app called Road Trippers. And what this app does is it allows you to create a waypoint, whether that's home or your next destination. And along the route, it lets you set a radius outside of the route. So on your route, if you want to say, I'm willing to drive two miles off of my route or five or ten miles, it searches within this radius of things like attractions, or things to see or do along your route. What did we find using it? We found things like Graceland, we found Cadillac Ranch, the Slug Bug Ranch in Amarillo, Texas. We found all the Breaking Bad uh, locations in New Mexico. So if you're just looking for random things to do along your route that you didn't really have any plans for, or download Road Trippers. Tip number four. A weird thing at four. Sleeping arrangements. So if you plan on staying at any Airbnbs, you can pretty much ignore this part and skip to this part of the video. If you plan on tenting every night, I'd recommend a good air mattress instead of just sleeping on the tent floor. It'll obviously take some time to inflate and deflate every day, but a poor night's sleep is not gonna do you any favors when you're driving 600 plus miles a day. And just know that most rest areas do not allow tenting, so you'll pretty much have to be primitive and either camp in the woods or find a cheap campground. And if you have a vehicle that allows you to sleep in it like we did, I would strongly suggest buying a rooftop box. You don't have to spend as much as we did on our Thule, but a rooftop box is gonna give you so much extra storage. Definitely do your research and get some that can withstand the weather you never know what you're gonna hit on the road and something that's gonna hold everything you want to bring as well as leave a little additional space for anything you might pick up along the way if you do have a rooftop box make sure you measure your car's height from the ground to the top of the box so you know which places you can and cannot go into like parking garages or drive throughs I'd also recommend looking into a door hinge footstep so it's easier to get into the top of your cargo box we also bought a cheap hitch step to get in and out of the Jeep easier 
So for actually sleeping in your vehicle, we used some old egg crates my parents had from when they went camping. And then we had an SUV air mattress on top of that. Then we had a queen size sleeping bag we put on top of that for added comfort and it kept it cool. Then we brought our own pillows and blankets from home just to make it comfortable. Since we're sleeping in the Jeep, we kept things set up all day. Didn't ever take the air mattress down. We were able to flip up the pillows to slide our cooler, our snacks, and our five gallon water jug all in the back while we were driving. And then just move them all to the front seats and move the seats up when it's time to sleep at night. If you're like us, you might not know from day to day where you're gonna be sleeping. We always kind of found either a rest area or pull-offs. Any place safe with lighting and a bathroom for me that was easy to pull off and find. We'd find it usually closer to dark and just set a waypoint and sleep. Okay, tip number five. Advice that we would give to you. So before you go, have a general idea of what you want to see, like the Grand Canyon or the Hoover Dam, Mount Rushmore, etc. It'll also be helpful to research the sites that you definitely want to see because some places like Yosemite at certain times of the year require reservations. Also be sure to check if places have hours of operation. For example, the Four Corner Monument closes the gates at a certain time. If you plan to go to at least more than one national park, I highly recommend you get the annual park pass. As of September of 2021, it was $80 and it lasts a full year. So we bought it in September of 2021. Ours will last till the end of September 2022. With this, you get free entrance into all the national parks, as well as some discounts for camping or even free camping at some of them. On top of buying the Park Pass, you also can use the NPS, National Park Service app, which you can look up all the different parks, what they offer, if they have hours of operation, any fees associated with those parks, what to do. You can save everything to your favorites, create your own profile. Highly recommend it. Even if you don't buy the Park Pass, the app is free and you don't need anything with your Park Pass to use it. So each day, have a general idea of where you want to end up next. What general direction and stay flexible. Don't set a strict schedule. So if you spontaneously see something that you want to stop at, you have the flexibility to do so. Randomly for us, I saw cool little prairie dogs before we went into Badlands. Pulled over and got to feed them some peanuts. And they try to steal my sunglasses. <laughs> also, have some entertainment downloaded, whether it be music, podcasts, audiobooks, just in case you're somewhere that just doesn't have cell service. This is a big one. Something we didn't do. And we are paying for it as we look back on our trip. Try, try, try to not drive at night. You just never know what you're going to miss. Especially if you're new to the area, you've never been there, you don't know what's there what views you're missing we were driving one night and you could tell just by the moonlight that it was a beautiful landscape and we looked it up the next day and we were actually on something called the cloud peak skyway which is a national forest in the bighorn mountains in wyoming we also decided to stay at a ta truck stop and it had all the amenities you're also able to pay to take a shower this one in particular was 14 dollars, but we were both able to go in at the same time and there's no time limit it also comes with your shampoo your conditioner towels there's a fan it's a full bathroom with your shower nice to have along the route if you're not staying in hotels or b&b's well these are mainly for the truckers along their routes it's also open to the public to use the amenities all right next don't let your gas tank go down to empty there's probably going to be long stretches of road where you don't see a gas station for a long time so fill up at like a quarter of tank probably my favorite tip buy yourself stuff Buy some souvenirs for everywhere you go, anywhere you go. For us, our thing is we try to buy a new magnet for every new place or new state we go to. That's why making sure you have extra room, whether it be in your regular bags or your rooftop carrier, have extra room. You never know what you might find along your way. So a very important piece of advice for your safety is be aware of your surroundings. For instance, San Francisco is infamous for car break-ins, which we didn't know before we left. So when we drove in San Francisco and we were looking for parking lots or parking garages, we were able to look up reviews and that's when we found out that cars are just getting broken into left and right. Which could be kind of scary if this is where you're sleeping while you're traveling. We were parking it to go do some touristy stuff around the city, go to Alcatraz. Luckily we found a place across from a restaurant, 
so we got good luck nothing happened to our vehicles but so many scary stories out there if you look up multiple parking lots or garages in the area all right last and certainly not least is to take a lot of pictures you'll be busy enjoying the views but take a minute or two to capture some memories along the way don't forget your selfies just have fun enjoy what this beautiful country has to offer whether you're going for a short weekend a couple week road trip like us just enjoy yourself you're never going to get these days back be sure to take pictures be prepared and just enjoy the ride and those were our five tips and tricks to traveling cross country or road tripping if you have any questions about our cross country trip that we didn't cover in this video feel free to ask down below in the comments of course we want to thank you for watching I'm John. I'm KP. We'll catch you next time. Bye. And washer fluid with good wind with good windshield washer blades. What? What? Windshield washer blades? Thank you. Because I would have left that in. <laughs> pack is pack appropriate. Is pack is pack appropriate. I'm going to go back to O and you can go to P. That's so, that's so <laughs> coincidental. <laughs> Letter P is the Shiwi in toiletries. <laughs>